<laughs> so some of you may know, me and my wife, just this year, moved into our dream house. Now, I'll be honest, the guy, I never really knew I had it. And I was fine in my town home, at my computers, whatever, I don't need to go to the house. But my wife had a dream house. And it turns out, through her hard work and work with the architect, I also had a dream house. And this year, we moved into it. This is our dream house. So, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is if anyone here has built a house, you know the horror story. The building from the ground up is very, very difficult. I didn't have this experience. I had a wonderful experience. And it was a seven year experience because of a giant recession in the middle of it. But I had a great experience. So, what I'm going to do is talk about how we built the house in seven years from the ground up on budget and got in without a whole bunch of pain. And we're going to talk about a few different areas. I'm going to talk about how to acquire land. You're going to build a house, you have to buy land. Turns out buying land isn't so easy. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Then we'll move into the design phase. How do you design a house? How do you work with an architect? What does that look like? And then finally, we'll talk about working with the ever feckless contractor. How that process works and how you can actually make that experience a pretty decent one. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start with buying land. In 2007, we decided we wanted to buy land. We didn't want to move to the city, we wanted to build a house. So we got to find it. So we're looking around Plymouth, we're looking in some of the suburban areas, and the first thing you run into is, well, it's really expensive. At that time, an acre of land was upwards of 300 grand. Hmm. So that's the first problem. It's super expensive. The second problem is you fork out 300 grand for land. Not that I would do that, but if you did, you cut the city and the builders give you this huge stack of papers which is the covenant. So you just bought grants for land and you can't build anything because you have to find your pitch rope, your external materials, materials, and everything else that needs to do to build a house, forcing you into you know building a house just like everyone else's. We had modern design in mind, which is impossible. So that was our second problem. And the third problem is well, how do you get a loan for this land? With the crash happening at that time, a lot of banks weren't wanting to loan for anything, especially for a place that may have help. So we found problems getting land. So what did we do to solve these things? Well, the first thing that we did is we looked at school districts and areas we could want to live that did not have covenants. And what we found is if you go outside about 10 miles outside the Fort and Fort Andy Fort, you run into areas, areas like Orono, Independence, Delano. And a lot of those places are very expensive, but there's certain townships like Independence that we actually chose that aren't that expensive. But you get the good school district of Orono and you get a little bit lower property taxes, and you get no covenants and a three acre minimum, meaning that you're not going to be super developed. And you're not going to have a bunch of development happening in your life. So we purchased, or well, we decided we wanted to get this land, and then we had to do the financing aspect. We went from Wells Fargo, Coldwell Bank, or all these banks, they didn't want to touch it. We finally found a product, an associated bank, which is a land loan for five years, pretty high interest rate, but it does convert into a construction loan. And then when the construction is done, a more traditional product for a mortgage. So that was the only bank we could find that would do it, and that's what we ended up going for. Now, finding the land is just the first step. There's some due diligence you need to do, and I'm very glad we did it because we went and ran into some problems. At this point, once you've picked out the land, you want to engage architects. Call the architects that you might be interested in, that you found online, or that you've seen their houses. Have them come up to the site and have them give you a feel if there's anything that can be done on the land. Once they come to the space, they'll be able to assess it. They'll be able to look at it and kind of get an idea. Okay, yeah, we can do something with this. They know, they have the mind, they have the knowledge, that sort of stuff. So engage your architect at that time. Secondly, get soil tests. Um, soil tests need to be done about every three, four years, but different counties require different times on that, and it may be 10 years since the last soil test. So get your soil test looked at because you want to make sure the soil is solid and it can be built on. And thirdly, write into your purchase agreement that my dad gave me this advice, he's a land broker right into the purchase agreement that the seller is responsible for all soil correction and we'll see who comes into the issue with that when we got into the build process. So that's some advice about buying land. Uh, we purchased it and then the market crashed and we sat on it for five years until the loan was going to switch over so we didn't make a decision and we come to the The next thing is the design process. This is one of the first renderings of our of our house. So we decided to work with an architect and the reason we did it is because there's really a lot of benefits to it. The first thing is they have a really great way and process to pull your house out of 
they ask you questions, they show you stuff, they go through the design process, and at the end you have something that is everything you want and you didn't even know it. From materials, from layout, <coughs> size. And so it's something that we could have definitely not done without it. Secondly, and more importantly, they act as an advocate in the construction process. A lot of these architects will work hand in hand with the contractor, making sure everything's to design, to spec, and up to their level of quality, because this is a product that they're going to be showing to potential clients. And thirdly, most architects will give you a guarantee that they can design something that's within your budget. When we started this process, we were way over budget. The house was too big. And iteration after iteration, we got it down to a number that was affordable, that we could afford, that we actually felt, wow, we can finally do it. And they stuck with us for about five years, going from design to design to design, burning a bunch of hours they weren't getting built, built for just because of that guarantee. So working with the architect, it's a really, really great experience. Finding an architect is not always so easy. A lot of them don't have things that they built locally that you can see, which is really important. That was a must for us. And not all of them offer that we'll build your design to budget guarantee. We worked with City Desk Studios. I can't recommend them enough. They were awesome. They paid with us the whole process, and we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Now, the third aspect is the build. There's my wife and our general contractor, Keith, in our kitchen working out some cabinet layouts. Now, this is where all the horror stories of one more different home building happen. Most general contractors, frankly, are feckless, they're jerks, they're building hundreds of houses and they have no time for you. Thankfully, if you engage an architect early, they have builders that they've worked with before. People that they know can work with the materials. We were doing two mass walls, portion, uh, siding, and flat rubber industrial roofs. Not all builders can work with that stuff. They knew people that they had worked with before that they had confidence could build it within budget. So we worked with a company in Crown Construction, and I can honestly say, wonderful experience. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. This is our DC Keith. He's just awesome. He's there every day, helps us with any concerns or questions we have. So things that you need to look for in a contractor, though, and this is just important if you're going to shop, shop it around, is they need to be willing to continually give you free estimates on a build. As our architect was re-rendering our drawings, re-rendering our drawings, trying to get us in budget, they have to go through the process of sourcing all the material, how much that's going to cost, how much the contractor hour is going to cost. And Crown Construction does that free of charge. It takes a little bit of time, but they do it, and they stuck with us with the entire process until we could get the number there. The second thing is, and you won't find this in many contractors, is complete transparency of budget. We had a spreadsheet with everything, every single line, from the you know two by fours to the sheetrock, and we could see it as money was being spent where they were. The third thing that they did that was really good is that they allowed us to stay on the calls with the bank whenever they were transferring money to pay the bank so they could or get payment from the bank so they could pay their stuff. We got to sit on those calls. And so it was completely transparent. They had a very strong change process. So if we want to change it, we were supposed to have a change process. So the key really is the transparent budget. You couldn't find that with anyone else. And Crown was really great at that. So I mentioned during the land sourcing, the importance of making sure you put verbiage in the purchase agreement that they're on for soil sources. The reason I mentioned that is this. After seven years, we dug our foundation. We were there, it was like the best day, but finally going to dig it, and they hit the wall. The soil tests that the, when I mentioned the soil tests, the soil tests that they had done were a little bit out of date, and we didn't redo our soil tests, but thankfully we had that verbiage in there. To correct this, it cost $50,000. They had to raise the entire lot up five feet. That means more concrete foundation, more concrete cost, more labor cost. And it, had we not had that verbiage in there, we would have been on the hook for it. And the first day, the project would have been over budget anyway. So thankfully, if I had advice, I would have did that. We put it in and saved me a bunch of money. And finally, me and my wife have our dream home. This is a picture at night. And the material on top is portion steel will eventually be that entire brown color. It's just not fully, fully changed yet. So in summary, building a house from scratch in seven years. Be careful when you buy land. Avoid the covenances and make sure your purchase agreement has proper verbiage in it. Find an architect that will be your advocate that has proven work that you can see and contractors that they can work with. And find a contractor that's completely transparent. And if you do all those three things, I can say I think you'll have Luck and not all the horror stories you hear about every time you talk to
And with that, I will turn the meeting back over to our next speaker today.